Ladies and gentlemen, it's currently June 28th, 2023, and the world champion of chess is named Ding Li Ren. But the number one ranked player in the world continues to be Magnus Carlsen. He's the best player over the last nearly 15 years or so, and in particular, one of the best assets of his game is his endgame technique. And in today's video, I will be showing you a game that he played today in the Global Chess League, which is a team format event being held uh, currently uh, in Dubai. Uh, and it was a game against Vishwanathan Anand, uh, the best chess player in the world residing in India. This was a ridiculous game of chess. Now, if you're new to the channel, this is not my usual setup. This is very embarrassing. If you're a returning viewer, you know that this is my uh, fabled uh, wall here in the mountains uh, of Europe. Um, and uh, Lucy will be joining me for some uh, content very, very soon. We're going to be reviving an old series. But for today, I have this completely just stupid game by Magnus. And by stupid, I'm not saying it's stupid like of a poor quality like what you would play. I, I mean, like this man should be banned for getting away with things like this because it, 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 it's honestly just ridiculous what he does uh, to people. Like, it, yeah, it's not fair. So Magnus opens the game. Uh, excuse me, Magnus is playing with the black pieces. Vichy opens the game with e4 and Magnus plays the French defense with the intention of going d5. He's been doing this recently because he's bored. So he's playing a lot of openings that traditionally are not very decent and give pretty good chances to the opponent. Um, the French is actually one of these openings. It's extremely provocative. It's not a bad opening, but at the top level, it's just not something you see very often. And Vichy Anand uh, plays the most critical response knight to c3. Vichy may not be playing as much top-level competitive chess, but this man knows more about chess than all of you watching combined. If y'all live like three extra lifetimes and still combine that knowledge, like Vichy has forgotten that much about chess. I mean, you don't become a 50 plus year old chess legend of the game, still competing at the highest level, five time world champion. And as he's known in India, Giga Chad, that's not actually his nickname. His nickname is Tiger of Madras, but he knows a lot. And so he plays the critical line, which is knight c3. And actually Magnus responds with the Winawar, which is the other critical line. Normally black plays knight of six here, puts pressure on this, and uh, and that's called the classical. But Magnus plays bishop to b4, and actually Magnus plays a, a variation which, uh, which I have played, which that's not usually a good thing. Uh, e5 here is the critical move, locking the center, and white is going to play queen to g4. Um, and by the way, if you see light flickering at any point throughout this video, um, I mean, it really makes a good scene like I'm in a prison somewhere and somebody is you know forcing me to record videos. Uh, but uh, no, it's just, you know, you go to a remote location for vacation and the electricity is not great. It's a miracle I can upload these videos. <laughs> the Wi-Fi is not bad. Um, C5 is the critical move. Now A3 tries to target the bishop. White is like, if you're going to put the bishop there, you got to take my knight. Black could go back, but he does take. And then he develops knight C6. Now, knight C6 is actually kind of an inaccuracy, according to top-level theory. Magnus knows that. He's not playing things that are bad by accident. Um, the critical lines here by black go queen c7, knight e7, and then the queen tries to pressure on the c-file. Uh, this move does not pressure on the c-file. That is definitely not the right move. And now queen to g4 is played. It is completely fine according to the computer. I have played this myself in a tournament, and I got obliterated. So... Now, now g6. White plays queen g4 to induce a weakness in the in the camp over here. Either black is going, going to have to play king to f8 or black is going to have to play g6. He plays g6. That's called a hook. A hook is a pawn near an enemy king that you could target with a pawn storm. Very useful because now you can play h4, h5. Actually, black is very close to already being completely lost. Like something just relatively trivial like this, as you can see from the eval, already beginning in white's favor. And uh, if black is careless, white is going to play bishop g5, bishop f6, rook h7, and it's going to be game over. So he plays h6. He plays h6 because against h5, he wants to play g5. Uh, but that's exactly what Vichy wants. Vichy plays h5. So he targets the pawn. Now we have g5. I and mean, the position looks absolutely horrible. Looks like it's barely hanging on by, you know, a thread f4 just trying to blow it open in fact it is hanging on by a thread for example if black takes on f4 white doesn't take white doesn't take white actually just plays queen g7 and black resigns because black cannot defend the rook um in your case you definitely shouldn't resign i feel like 40 percent of you would still win this position with black um 
So black needs to strike right now because if black doesn't strike right now, white is going to go here and then here and then here or here and here. Like it's very, very bad and you can't take. And I have an overwhelming attack on this. So the only weakness in white's position is the pawn on c3, which was weakened by this entire opening. Isn't that incredible how openings all tie together and have game plans based on previous moves? That's the way top level chess is supposed to work. Don't just make one move threats. Don't play chess like that. So queen a5. And now white has to respond. He plays bishop to d2. Um, white could have also played rook h3, and he could have played knight e2, but this pawn is actually pinned to the king, so that would have lost the defender. That is why this move was played. And now Magnus plays f5, because sometimes the only way to fight fire is with fire. I don't actually know if that's, like, accurate. That's a saying. I don't. Maybe we have firefighters watching. Listen, this channel has a lot of followers. I'm sure maybe many of you actually are firefighters. So do let me know if you can fight fire with fire. Um, the idea of f5 is that white would take en passant, and then black would immediately capture back, and then play something like pawn to g4, and would lock the position down and not really be any worse, and then would play knight e7, knight f5, and just get a very reasonable position. So Magnus uh, is, is doing himself kind of a, a, a nice favor here, and now, uh, again, if he takes on f4, uh, there is queen to g7, so he plays the move g4, and now we can sort of take our first breath. Uh, hopefully not, hopefully you've been breathing throughout the video. Um, but uh, we can take our first breath. And the point is that now the position is locked. It's a very locked, very close position. No pawn breaks are possible anywhere. None of these pawns can break. The only break that's happening right now is over here. And Vichy actually does something about that immediately because his idea is, well, we're going we're gonna to now rotate over here. We're going to fight over on this side of the board because this side is dead, right? So Vichy does something smart here because Vichy could play something like knight to e2, uh, but he doesn't want to get locked down. He actually doesn't want something like this. That would be a nightmare for white. It would be a nightmare because white has pieces that like to roam, run free. It's like buying a big dog and keeping him in a studio apartment in New York City. Personally, uh, if you buy, that's uh, what I think. I think if you have a huge dog and you have no space in your apartment, you're just a bad person. Just saying it right now, all right? Just saying it right now, you got to get the dog some space. If you do live in a small apartment, you got to walk it multiple times. Like, what are you doing? Like a husky in New York? It should be in the mountains somewhere running in snow. So anyway, D takes C5. My rants aside, uh, Vichy takes on C5 to open the position and now rotate over that way. If you're wondering why Magnus hasn't done anything exciting yet in seven minutes and you want to click away from the video, I don't know, you're beyond salvation. You're a product of the social media machine in the modern era. Knight e7. You'll notice that Magnus does not even commit a tempo to taking this back. I think he didn't want to, his queen being used like a pinata, but his edginess had to wear off very quickly because he took the pawn on the very next move. It's like a kid that's like, I'm not going to eat the vegetables. <laughs> then you offer the kid dessert and suddenly he can eat the vegetables. Um, knight c2. So everybody's developed. Everything is good. Uh, and now Magnus plays the move knight to a5, right? He wants to come over here. He wants to develop the bishop over here. He wants to fight on the c file, rook c8, and all that good stuff. And Vichy now plays queen f2. V Vichy has finally like needed to think for the first time in the game. They were playing a 15-minute rapid game. That's on the screen, right? I didn't forget to put that in the travel setup. Yep, they got 15 minutes. All right, great. Um, and, uh, you know, Vichy's like, I can keep the queens on. I can attack over here. I can do this. But Vichy thought my plans are a lot smoother, and I, I can. the position has more clarity if the black queen is not harassing all of my pieces on this side of the board. So let's trade queens. That's a big decision. Um, Vichy is not intimidated by Magnus whatsoever. Vichy's like, you know, you go to your local gym to play basketball. There's a 50-year-old man, and you're like, what's he going to do? And then he posts up. He can shoot the three. He plays defense, and he calls you the B-word, like, while he's doing it. He's like, bro, you are trash. And then he drains the ball in your face and makes your mama jokes. Like, Vichy is in his 50s, and he's still, like, clapping at this level. So he's not afraid. He's not, like, a lot of guys would not trade queens against Magnus because they're not worried about 
like because they're worried that he's so good at end games that he's just going to outmaneuver them from this position even if the position is equal because the chess is about creating chances right bishop to d7 very natural move now vichy plays a4 multi-purpose move the first and very hilarious purpose of the move a4 is to actually prevent the bishop from maybe sitting there <laughs> because it's actually a very annoying square for white to, to have a piece sit because it just applies permanent pressure the other idea of pawn to a4 is to potentially play bishop to b5 and if black overreacts with something like a6 the dark squares are actually very weakened look what happens to the eval at top level chess look what happens to the eval if you if you play a pawn move it goes from zero to 0.4 that's a substantial increase so magnus plays king f7 because he doesn't want to commit his king excuse me doesn't want to commit his pawns and magnus in general is very limited with his pawn play he doesn't like to overcommit his pawns which is saying a lot because you look over here that was out of necessity and also that repels the white forces vichy now plays rook to b1 very natural move and then magnus plays b6 he doesn't play a6 he plays b6 because uh, it's better to strengthen the dark squares over here because he doesn't have a dark squared bishop. So these pieces are going to try to fight on the light squares, but the pawns would be very nicely positioned to uh, fight on the dark squares because he doesn't have a dark squared bishop. Bishop c1, very natural. We're trying to go over here. Reroute. There it is. That man is also rerouting. That man is doing a, a Norwegian horse dance. It's when a Norwegian warrior walks into a field and does a dance and then gets kicked in the head by a horse. Um, and uh, the point is that you go here, and then you go here, and then you go here, and then, I don't know, hopefully something good happens. In reality, Magnus knew right away what Vichy wanted when he played bishop to c1, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, he knew that Vichy's idea was not actually to take the diagonal. He knew that Vichy's idea was to play bishop a3, and then bishop b4. And that would kick the knight out. And you kind of want the knight out if you're playing uh, with white because that would be a very nice weakness creation. Then you would bring your king over and make progress and probably go on to win the game. Magnus was just in time with his Norwegian horse dance, and now his knights are glued perfectly together, right? Now he puts rook hb8. This looks stupid. Like, if y'all played like this, I would yell at you because you don't see the future. Magnus is ready. He's in prime position. His rooks are on the ugliest squares possible. The ugliest squares possible. But he is ready for the next phase of the game, which is potentially opening up that side of the board. That's exactly what he does. He now puts his knight on c4, and he's ready to potentially move the pawns forward. In all end games, you are also actively considering what happens with the exchanges, what trades bishop for a pawn, uh, and, 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 and what future pawn advancements might occur. Now, this exchange sends the game into an opposite colored bishop endgame, and there is absolutely only one person who can win this position, and it's Vichy Anand with the white pieces. Magnus plays rook c8. Now that that transformation has occurred, he can rotate back to c8. Excuse me, c8. Vichy plays a5, trying to knock on the door. All endgames feature potential exchanges. This exchange would benefit white massively because the knight absolutely murders the bishop. The bishop has a bunch of colleagues that are all on light squares, all taking its opportunities away. Almost every piece in the white position is on a dark square. It will be in the future. The knight applies meaningful pressure. Also can very quickly... It, it's just bad. It's bad. All right, very, very bad. B5. So Magnus locks it down, and a couple of moves later, he plays A6. This is just desperate defending by Magnus. I mean, this bishop, absolute god. This bishop, bozo. This knight, potential to be a god, right? This knight, bozo. The only thing that white has, is uh, that black has potentially, is the knight arriving on the E4 square. Other than that... I don't see anything. So how is Magnus going to do this? I mean, you clicked on a video about Magnus, like it's probably going to be something. Let's see. Rook d8. First order of business, we need to relieve the pressure. If you don't relieve the pressure, I actually don't even really care about the material. Uh, I can very easily sack my rook to get in, in many positions, and then I'm going to win the knight after I take back. So we have rook takes d4. We have bishop c6. Rook d2. And now Magnus plays g3 check completely gives up a pawn which gives up the pawn what is he doing bro like why is this man playing for a win in a position he's still trying to play for a win it's ridiculous he's just playing g3 now the point is if you play king g3 black plays rook g8 check there's no need to do that if you play knight takes g3 black is still going to play rook g8 and rook g4 and somehow it's like kind of a pain in the ass to play this position with white so white plays king g1 magnus still, uh, pl still plays rook g8 and then he just goes back to d8 you can't take the bishop because the rook is pinned so vichy plays bishop d6 
if knight takes bishop, knight takes bishop by white. So he has to move his bishop. So Vichy goes back. It's probably going to be a draw. It's just a fortress. Ain't nothing that can be done. Magnus plays rook d5. He's got a minute and a half on the clock. Ain't nobody got business winning this game with the black pieces. Ain't nobody except maybe Magnus Carlsen. King to f1. But how's he going to do it? We're waiting for the moment. King e1. It's like your favorite football team. Down one. Right? Extra time. Knight c6. But all right. If you take... Ta oh, I see it. If you take... And then take, and then take, and then take. Maybe you're going to get that pawn. Uh-oh, that could be weird because then the G-pawn's a problem. It's still a draw, but Vichy plays knight e2. Magnus posing some problems. Now he trades, but he lost his pawn. He lost his G-pawn. Well, that's it. I mean, that's bishop 2, f3, bishop d1. That's it. I mean, there's nothing. You, there's nothing you can do. Magnus starts bringing his king. Starts bringing his king. And now Vichy takes the knight. The one piece that had a chance of jumping around successfully in the position is gone. The light squared bishop is not going to do anything in this position. King e7. King c1. King d7. King b2. King c6. King a2. He brought his king over there because in this position, black at some point is going to put his king on c5. Black's king cannot cross the center line. He can't. There's nothing you can do. The only thing you could potentially do in this position is move your b-pawn but even then it's a draw why is it a draw because after it takes here so what look at this you won the second pawn you can't get into the position it's a fortress it's a defensive fortress white will just hang out on a2 b2 the rest of the game and black cannot cross this line he can cross this line with his king but that's it king b5 king a2 a5 king b2 a4 king a2 that's it it's just a draw you just can't make any progress because so vichy is not afraid he's just he's just sitting and waiting he's like all right this you know this oaf is gonna uh, come to realize that you know okay b4 so what i take magnus goes king d4 20 seconds on the clock this man is gunning for a win with his king but there's no way this works there's no way this works for two reasons you cannot just sacrifice pawns in the knight and bishop endgame you're just gonna have less pawns you can't complete a Lego set with missing pieces. Like, it just, you can, you'd call the company or maybe just ignore it. But, like, in certain situations. And the other thing is, like, white is defending everything. If you play king to e3 at the wrong moment, I'm going to sack my knight. I'm going to promote my pawn. I'm also going to sack over here. Your bishop just can't stop both pawns. It just doesn't work. The whole thing definitely doesn't work, right? So he plays king d3. Vichy plays b5. Pawn takes b5. What is Magnus doing? What has he gotten himself into? The pawn is a square away from queening. He's completely lost, right? 20 seconds on the clock. <sighs> he had it all planned out. The whole time, all of this calculated decision, playing on the knife's edge of the game, the circus act of walking the tightrope. He knew all of this was going to happen. Or he winged the whole thing, and I'm just hyping, up, hyping him up in this video. But I, I don't think so. I think he would be humble if he said something like that. He knew Vichy was going to get this, and he was going to get this, and this game is going to come down to a race. A race of some 20 moves. All the way back here, this race began. Sacking the pawn to activate the king to get down to d2. So that after pawn to a7, you can play b4, and this, you have the red carpet for the pawn. So bishop d5, now Vichy has to go back to f1 but he goes in forward to the position gives up his knight and goes with the pawn you can't take it because i queen the other pawn so magnus plays b4 e7 you are going to lose this race b takes c3 a2 c2 but i queen first and if you take the queen i queen here and if you make a queen it's a draw it's a draw because it's stalemate. The cruelty of the C pawn, in this position I would play queen to e3, sacrificing my queen. And after king to c2, if you take it stalemate, because neither of my pawns can move, queen d3, you are now obligated, forced to take the queen. And either piece that captures, it is still a draw. How utterly ridiculous is that? What a calculated defensive sequence by Vichy Anand to sack his knight to get all of this and then Magnus doesn't go for it. 
he seals the queen off from the king. The computer here finds c3. This is how computers kind of kill the mystique of the best players in the world. The move c3 threatens bishop d5 check, and if you play something like queen d7, you can't really take, king e1 is winning because the queen can't stop the pawns and neither can the king, which is, you know... Queen e7 check, and then the king would run, and, 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 and then you would shield yourself, and then you would be winning. But bishop e4 is still equal. Like, this is still defendable, but this is impossible. Queen d8 check, bishop d3, that's it, the game is over. Queen d4. There was queen a5 check, but it didn't stop anything because c3. So bishop to d3, queen d4. Wait, but c1 queen is still a draw. Queen e3, and queen takes d3. So in this position, Magnus promoted to a knight. He played against the queen with a bishop and a knight, and he promoted to a knight with a check, with the shield of the bishop and the pawn, and the critical squares being covered by his most important pieces, so it was impossible for the queen to ever get close. The king moved because he was in check, and the pawn stepped one step closer. The knight will move, and the pawn will promote. And there is just not enough room. You, your own pawn gets in the way, and if you play queen f2, I just play knight e2. I am completely shielded. Queen to b6 played by Vichy. The knight slides out of the way. Vichy takes, push, Vichy resigns. Actually, in the game broadcast, something very funny happened here. That's not what happened in the game, but I think they were analyzing. Vichy resigned in this position. Magnus won. In the broadcast, it said queen here, which is fine. But then it said that Magnus went back to c1, which is a move that maybe you would play, but not Magnus. Uh, c1 queen, of course, wins the game. It wins the game because you're just up two pawns, and then this knight will always take and stop that one. This man promoted to a knight to fight off a queen and promote another pawn. And he did all of this from a position where, like, I mean, it's literally not possible to win with black. Uh, I mean, it, even all the way back here. Like, if Magnus hadn't played g3, if he had been lazy for a move and played rook d8, what would have happened is this, this, g3. That would have been a draw. That, that, that's it. I mean, this is just completely a draw. Magnus, for no reason at all, in a position he's got absolutely no business calling the shots, gives away a pawn completely to activate his rook. Then he proceeds to get into a tangled web of pieces here, trade the rooks, trade the pawns, and just all he's got to do is threaten. He's just got to threaten nasty things. And even here, faced with the prospect of a fortress, he sacrifices a pawn for king activity. And they get into a race where it's one tempo to queen, one tempo to break through, a completely ridiculous avoidance of a stalemate trap with the threat of the promotion of the queen here. And he promotes to a knight, and that wins him the game. And then he went on Twitter and then he said he he didn't actually plan that and he just was trying to promote to a queen, but he couldn't find a queen anywhere around. So he promoted to a knight. That's basically what he said. Which is, you know, it's peak Magnus content. Uh, online, you know, you just click this and it becomes a queen. You might not even have auto, you might have auto queen on. Which is a really good reason, by the way, why you shouldn't. Yeah, this man is a magician. I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> this show stuff he does is just stupid. Like, it, I don't know how he does this. Um, that's all I have for you today. Uh, Lucy content coming up. Uh, vacation's good. I'm going to come back tanned and uh, hopefully well-rested. Get out of here.